Hi guys, so today I have to photograph lots of artwork for my Etsy shop. Um, I get a lot of people asking me how I photograph it, where I photograph it, what I do with lighting and things like that. So I thought I'd film it for you and then you can see what I do. So all I use um, when I'm photographing my artwork is a backdrop, just a plain white backdrop. I use something called foam board, um, which is just a really cheap white surface. I think a lot of people um, use this when they're photographing things for their Etsy shop. I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, it looks just like, kind of like card, but it's like, it's like hollow. It's literally just a piece of foam um, with white surface either side and that makes it really, really good because it's really, really light. Foam board is really good because it's a really cheap way to bring a lot of bright light into the room and to reflect from. It's really nice when you're photographing for Etsy to have a white background or a plain background which isn't too strong a colour. I think this piece which is, I don't know how big it is, it's like, it's pretty big, um, I don't know what size it is, I think it's like A1? Yeah I think it's A1 in the UK anyway. Um, and I think this literally costs like probably a couple of quid if that. So I'll show you a clip of me actually photographing them so you can see how I do it. I would also suggest if you're photographing art for a print that you want to sell, um, I always use a tripod personally because it gives you a, a much much crisper, sharper image and that is like so important that you have really high quality when you're selling prints of your artwork. So for most of my smaller paintings, um, like the ones that you can see behind me, I usually photograph them just in the studio um, using that piece of white foam board that I showed you a second ago. Um, but for bigger paintings, like, you know, sort of like 60 inch paintings, um, I usually photograph them outside just because I don't find that there's enough light inside to really get the detail in the painting when it's, when it's so big. So I usually pick a cloudy day because if it's too bright sunshine um, then it can like make your image a bit yellowy and it can also make shadows really obvious. So I like a bright but cloudy day um, and that's the perfect light, perfect white light for photographing artwork. I take photographing my artwork really seriously because when I first started um, I didn't really have a decent camera to start with um, so I kind of just took snaps rather than actually high quality photos and now there's so many regrets that I have of that because I've sold paintings that have like long gone to different homes and I don't have any record of it apart from like a blurry little snapshot that's really dark and so especially if you're just starting out just remember to take really high quality photos of your work even just for you to look at in the future because you do forget what work you've done in the past and it is nice to look back through sometimes to see how far you've come with your progress and things like that. So yeah, I find it really important to document all your work, just even if it is just for you. So when I photograph my art, I really try and get every little detail in there, um, especially the little details that make the art piece really unique because you can't necessarily see that when um, it's just on like a big image. So once I've finished photographing my artwork, I put it onto my computer and upload it, and then I use Photoshop to edit it, edit all the images. I don't really do a lot of heavy editing, for obvious reasons, because I want it to look like it does in real life. Um, but I do just usually um, heighten the brightness, a little bit of the contrast, but I usually put the painting right next to me and literally try and match it as best I can because when someone purchases a painting off my Etsy shop I don't want them to get it in real life and it look completely different you know so I want to get it to look as close as possible so yeah I usually put the paint, the actual painting right next to me when I'm editing the image of it and then I can really like make sure it looks the same just wanted to mention as well you don't necessarily need a big DSLR um, camera to take a good high res photograph I mean even now phones have cameras that are so good. Um, I mean, some of this video, obviously because I'm using my camera, will be shot with my phone. Um, so the qualities that, of the phones nowadays, you can actually get fantastic quality. So if you just maybe try and make a tripod or buy a tripod for that phone um, that sits on the ground so it doesn't have any shakiness to it, and if you go out on a bright day, you will get a really good crisp photograph. So you don't need a big DSLR camera. I've just got one already, so, I just obviously use that because I can. 
just wanted to mention that because I don't want people to feel restricted um, into what they can do because you can literally start off with barely any equipment and make it work. So if there's anything else that you want to see inside my studio or different things just let me know in the comments box because I'd really love to make a video for you guys if there's something that you fancy specifically. So I hope that helped to give you a little insight into how I photograph my art. I'm sure there's lots of different ways that um, can really make it bright and crisp but these are just a few of my tips and I hope you enjoyed having a little nosy into how I do it.